Hi, my name's Edward Blumel. And I'm Adele Leontz. In season two, I'd say... Determined. Marcus finally gets some. <laughs> I think that's quite important, and that is important. It is important. Sounds glib, but it is a big part no, of it. No, it is, not it is, yeah. Yeah, what about, what about Phoebe? I'm just going to go with my classic, sassy, classy, and let's give it lots of strength and determination. There you go, there's four. Got <laughs> okay. the last one for free. <laughs> no other um, characters. Yeah, no, that's more because <laughs> anyone he can get his mitts on. <laughs> he's, un he's unstoppable this season. <laughs> um, no, he, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a season where sort of uh, we see Marcus really uh, like find a companion in Phoebe, which is really nice because uh, in series one he's very much sort of the the naughty son of Matthew. Um, but we don't see much about Marcus's private life or sort of w what he does, who he hangs out with, or anything like that. So it was um, it was really nice to be able to delve into that and do it alongside Adele. Um, we had a great time, didn't we? I mean, for a start, you've got a human that's been planted into this sort of uh, lots of creatures, and that in itself is just a great experience to go on, you know, with just your audience in being humans <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and Phoebe being human. And it's kind of, it's a nice angle to kind of come in with a completely different energy, completely different way of looking mm. at the world. Um, and that that adds so much to the uh, De Clermont kind of um, world and where it's heading. Yeah. Um, so, you know, she she definitely plays her role within, um, within season two. It's um it's nice to see as well. Sort of the big shift in season two is a, a huge amount of it. I'd say probably seventy five percent of it is set in the sort of Elizabethan period. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's great to see sort of. I feel like it's quite a rare thing in a show that that, that that a season just completely takes, almost becomes a different show. And I yeah. think it's great because that brings a a whole uh, smorgasbord of new characters mm. and um, new storylines and settings and uh, such an important part of particularly the vampires lives is the fact that they've been alive so long so it's amazing to be able to delve into history which is obviously so important to them because they've lived it oh, oh. take with me oh, you see, see you can't go too hard with this because if it's too if it's too um futuristic for them they will just kill you I think, or think you're a witch or something. Like if I if I went back in time with an iPhone, and you I was like, and I was that. like, check it out. How am I going to check my Instagram? I would definitely um, take my soy sauce. You take a soy sauce. You yeah. see, that's a great one because they would just be like, wow, this is amazing. This enhances our food. Yeah. If I went back with my iPhone, they'd be like, burn him at the stake. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> they go, they're like, he's what he's doing? What on it? As I'm playing, like, even old apps, even the ones like Doodle Jump, they'd be like, get him on the stage. Five. Yeah, that's a glass from the past, isn't it? Doodle Jump. I played it the other day. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I probably, I, I think I think food is a great one. Take a sauce. Just a bit of mayo. <laughs> Just a bit of mayo, do you know what I mean? You could probably make mayo, though. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, to be fair, uh, olive oil? That's what you need, though. Maybe olive oil is a good one to take. God, maybe that's really bad. You can't go okay, about that. Like, talk to these two actors. They said they'd take olive oil. Bad. They could take anything. Um, Rapeseed oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Different type. Two different types. Go on. I think it's a more in, it's more interesting for you to answer because obviously what interests me is the fact that he lives off a diet of blood. Um, which is which is insane and very interesting. Just sort of oh, like it's, I feel like it's quite hard to look past that, that he's immortal and um, and sort of um, feed, feeds feeds on blood. Um, but I, I guess I've got to think about the more human nature. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would I would say there's just I think there's just something within you know him that is charismatic, oh. cheeky. I mean, you're very cheeky as soon as you, we, we sort of meet. And, you know, as much as she wants to kind of um, keep the sort of 
you know, the work relationship. She's intrigued by him. You know, she's intrigued by his history. She's intrigued by his family, um, first and foremost. I think that's, I, I think we have to make that very clear. Um, that, yeah. that That is what um, sort of fascinates her about this this guy who walks in. And then it just so happens that, it, you know, it takes its own path. It takes its own course. Yeah, I think it's the age really is, is something that, is interesting to Phoebe and also I find interesting about Marcus definitely is is the fact that he um, you know obviously he presents and dresses and, and looks like somebody who's in his mid-twenties but has been through so much um, um, and, and has experienced so many things sort of good and bad um, and uh, because of that there's sort of you know he, he, he's, he keeps it hidden a lot but there is sort of a, an aged wisdom to him um, that he's sort of he's seen everything before and I think that's why Phoebe's so interesting because uh, I think the idea of a human character the, uh, the I mean you know it takes her a little while but eventually does sort of accept it and sort of really get involved I think shows like such bravery and um, yeah, she's and like tenacity she's, yeah. to, she definitely doesn't shy away from um, kind of this this new world that's been opened up to her. Um, you know, it, it it comes from just complete like you know, um, just 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 intrigued by the whole history of everything. Um, and you know, the the undeniable sort of chemistry that they have with each other. Um, and that's sort of what you know you, you can't you can't deny that that's not there. So yeah, that's that's kind of where we are where we're at with them. Mm. I don't think this is really a spoiler, but I think sort of because uh, it's something that has to happen. But I think the moment that uh, Phoebe and Marcus really sit down and talk about um, what it is to be a vampire mm, and, that's all really, and, and really what it's fun. been through and what Marcus has been through and sort of what vampires go through every day, sort of, you know, we, uh, he talks about their diet and... and um, It's just and, basically all the hum human questions that you want to ask a vampire. If yeah. any human sat in front of a vampire went, what do you eat? Like, what do you do? Yeah, like, it's, they Who are your friends? Have you got a mum? Or like... They sort of know? answered all of the questions that you as a viewer would, <laughs> would actually want to... Because it's something that I think... Because, because Diana is a witch and sort of knows of the world already. In season one, we never really got to see someone come in who is like one of us, who, who, mm. who's like, where do you get your blood from? If, if you're not killing people, where are you getting it from? And like, what what do you do at night? Like, do you, do you fall asleep? Like, is mm. it true about garlic? Like all of that stuff. Mm. So like, it's um like, there's all these little things that I think, and is what makes our relationship, I think quite a nice juxtaposition to what we've seen before in the show. That's just like the human element to it. I think fantasy for me is a genre that I think is so fun to play in because it really does give you the opportunity to move away from reality and um, really like embed yourself into something that's surreal and uh, and has a different set of rules to our life. So I think that I always think that's super fun and and it's a challenging role to play someone who's who's sort of that old and um, has been through what he's been through. So yeah, I just think. Playing a vampire is great fun. I don't know many actors that would that would see that and be like, don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it was definitely like any time I'm looking at roles now, I, I'm looking for, um, you know, s s something. I'm looking for strength. I'm looking for an interesting storyline. I'm in I'm interested in, um, you know, sort of the connections they have with other characters. But, you know, as women now, we're just kind of going through a stage where we deserve more and we we want more as actors. And so, you know, for me, it was just definitely having a, a, a character that, you know, really has that sort of, you know, rooted element to it. Um, and the, and the, the character's been, you know, sort of, you know, embedded and, you know, she's got somewhere to go. Um, and also from reading the book, I knew that there was going to be a really interesting sort of story like that. Um, so yeah, it was like, yes, please, a bit more of this. Thank you. They're on it. Yeah, they on love it, it like they a really car do love it. Yeah, they do. Um, it's lovely to have such a passionate fan base. I think already it meant that, you know, even when we were doing season one, 
it was just nice to know that there was already a, like such a strong support for the show. And people, you know, as soon as the cast was announced, getting involved, sort of, um, uh, sort of, you know, contacting by social media and stuff, say they were so excited. Some of them contacting, saying, "I wish you had never been cast as this part." Um, <laughs> and then, and you know, things like that. But that's all part. That's what's great. I mean, even in stuff like that, it's just great to see people that care so much about something because it, um, you know, Whether like they, you've said, yeah. they've like they've like waited so long so to long. see this stuff on so the screen. So patient. And um, it's so fun to sort of <clears throat> give it to them, even if they do disagree. <laughs> That's a nice question. I like that one. Um, in season two, oh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. It's so weird though because we're very like sort of separated from anything that sort of goes on. That's um, yeah, not just us. Really. I think I, I, um, the characters that I always enjoyed. I've, I've done a couple Sarah. of scenes with them. Um, I like doing scenes with Domenico, played by Greg Chillin. Ooh, yeah, um, he's who's, a, who's the perfect slimy vampire, but um. Such a loomer. He's such a loomer. Off, off screen such a loomer. Is, is, the, the nicest, is, I think, categorically the nicest man in the world. So The most horizontal yeah, yeah, yeah. man in the so world. So chill. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm always sort of, I always enjoyed doing, I did a couple of scenes with him in season two uh, that were great fun. Um, Storyline-wise, though, I think Satu has a great journey. Mm. Um, she sort of dips in and out of season two, but um, I think sort of in the grand scheme of season one, season three, I think she is um, amazing. And Marlin, who plays her, is amazing at sort of portraying what is an incredibly terrifying um, witch. And I think she's someone who, whenever she came on screen in series one, I was like, you know, shivered a bit, but in the right way. <laughs>